It's Polyraven here, my name is Silark and in this video I'm going to show to you how to get and use the Polyraven UV tools. So the first thing to do if you don't have the script yet is to get it from polyraven.com slash UV. After that the easiest way to install it is to drag and drop the Polyraven UV installer.mal into your Maya. In case you can't drag and drop for some reason, you can also open or import this file. After that, you can go to File, Save Preferences to make sure it doesn't get removed in case of a crash. To run the script, just click on this newly created icon in the shelf. When you run the script for the first time, it will ask for your permission to create permanent runtime comments, to which hotkeys can be assigned in the hotkey editor. If hotkeys is something you are interested in, go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Hotkey Editor, Switch to Custom Script, and you will find the category named Polyraven UV. There, the runtime comments appear in the same order and named almost identically as the buttons in the UI. Speaking of the user interface, you can see it's split to multiple categories of tools which you can expand and collapse. In the bottom there is this Reset UI button, which will collapse all categories and reset almost every value back to default. In case you minimize, close or relaunch the script, the UI should open exactly the same way and the same position where it was before. Starting the things from the back, I would first like to show you the viewport shaders that comes with this script. You can find these in the checker and flow material. To create the shaders, first we should click on the create slash update button which will create the tree shader that comes with this script. The checker, flow and chrome shader. Through which we can cycle through by pressing the cycle assign shader while we select the object we want to change the materials for. So the order goes like this, checker, flow, chrome, back to lumber, then checker again and on and on. Of course, because these shaders are just simple Maya shaders, they behave exactly the same way as any other shaders in the viewport. Therefore, the create slash update button will also change the current viewport settings to be able to display the shaders properly, which means turning off the use default material and turning on textures. In case you have some heavy textures assigned to the geometries, you might want to consider this. The checker shader is made that way, that it's useful from distance as well as up close. And then this wide grid is actually already showing how big one pixel is with the current settings. In the UI, the value in the res text box is the resolution the shader is simulating. We can change this to whatever resolution the texture is going to be. The checker 1 res is the resolution of the big squares and checker 2 is the resolution of the small squares. So this way we also have a visual representation of the pixel density. The shader at the border of the UDIM or the UV tile draws a yellow line and if some geometry has no UVs it is going to be yellow as well. This also works like that for the flow shader but not for the chrome. Speaking of the flow shader, it is basically meant to show the orientation of the UVs in the 3D viewport. In UV space these arrows are pointing in the V direction or upwards if you like. The chrome shader is more useful for modeling than unwrapping. It's made to visually check for any modeling error on the mesh and as you can see it can work without having the lights enabled in the scene. I personally make the UVs by modeling so for me it makes a lot of sense to include it here. Be careful with the cycle assigned shader, as if you had any custom shader assigned to the geometry you run the script on, it won't go back to that shader. The UV distribution and layout has the most sophisticated functions in this toolkit, however it is easy to run them once you know what they do. The layout is actually using Maya's inbuilt layout with a few enhancements. The most important of these is that it's UDIM aware, meaning it will spread UVs into the next UDIM in case they can't fit to one. It will only spread until the 10th tile in U direction and will jump up one in V direction if necessary. It should do this while not making anything cross the UDIM border, except if your UV shell is that big that it can't fit into one UDIM. It can also move the UVs of entire geometries and groups together. I will talk more about the selection later, because it works the same way for all the three functions. The distribution is going to distribute the UVs evenly into a rectangular area. It will try to fit it into a square, but if a different ratio seems more optimized for the algorithm, it will by default choose that instead. 
If the UVs to be distributed can fit to one UDIM, it will continue to go into the next one. This script will take the biggest bounding box and use that value for spreading. So if only the distribution is applied, the UV space that's used is not going to be very efficient. This brings us to the size-based distribution and layout, which is the combination of the previous two functions that I talked about. So this one is basically going to virtually group the UVs based on their size and after that run the distribution separately on those groups and later lay out them. This is very useful for geometries with many UV shells and repetition, as it essentially can put all the same, in this example, screws and bolts and hydraulics or any identical part next to each other. These scripts can accept any kind of selection, components, transform as well as groups. But the interpret selection options is going to control how the script is going to understand your selection. The first option is the selection list. In this one, the script is going to be applied to whatever you select, however you select it. It means if you are selecting UV shells, it's going to run the script on UV shells. If you select geometries, it's going to move the UVs of individual geometries together. And the same applies for groups. However, if you only select one geometry or one group, it's going to consider your selection's children. So in this case, if you select a group, it's going to move the UVs of the individual children of the group together, which can also be a group or a geometry. If only one geometry is selected, it's going to move the UV shell separately of that geometry. This behavior is similar to the second option, the UV shells. It means that whatever you select, let it be multiple groups or geometries, is going to take it as if you had selected the UVs and run the first option, saving you from having to select all the UVs of heavy geometries or groups. The last option for interpretation of the selection is the hierarchy. This one is useful if you prepare your hierarchy on a smart way, for example, separating by material or by pieces which UVs shall be clustered together. For this, one of the best selection is the main root group, of course, until the point you want the script to run. It will go to the children of this group, and if those are groups, they are children, all the way down to the UV shells of each geometry around the functions on each of them. Combine this with the size by distribution layout, and this is essentially leading to an organized automatic layout that you have control over. As you can see in this example, the different materials are being kept at one place, and inside the wood, for example, each separate window is kept together. There are further advanced settings in the distribution and layout category, which gives you great control over the behavior of the aforementioned functions. The options in the global settings apply to all three functions. The gap controls the gap between the shells and from the UDIM border. No undo prevents writing anything to the RAM with the expense of not being able to undo. Move to UDIM gives the option to have the result move at the end to a more convenient location. It can be center of the mass of the starting bounding box, the starting coordinates of the current UDIM, or the first UDIM. In the distribution, there are the randomization settings. By default, it's set to unique, which means not random at all. Equals mean there's gonna be equal amount of copies in each resulting variation, while random is truly unpredictable. The number of the variations can be also controlled. Foursquare settings is set to optimized, which means it's going to try to use the space as optimized as possible. On will generally shoot for more equal sided bounding box. Off will distribute in one line till the edge of the UDIM. The direction can be controlled to go upward or sideways. And the UFIT and VFIT is a way to force it to fit into an area. In case it cannot fit, it will split to multiple chunks and fit each chunk to that area. In the layout settings, we can turn off the UDIM awareness and also control the U and the V ratio quickly. In the size-based distribution layout settings, we can turn off one part of the function. It can be used to speed up finding the correct ratio for the layout. First, disable the layout and just do the size-based distribution, then turn off the distribution and enable the layout, then play around with the U and the V ratio values from the layout settings. In the transform UV, on the left side, you find something that might look familiar for you from Maya's UV toolkit. And it's doing pretty much the same, except that you can move the UVs with this one even when just the group is selected, so it doesn't require you to select actually the UVs. 
The Use Transform Proxy enables you to move large chunk of UVs together quickly. It also accepts all kind of selection and it basically creates a plane and moves its UVs to the bounding box of the original selection. You can move, scale or rotate the UVs of this plane. And the original UVs is going to be moved there as well once you release the mouse button. Sometimes you have to wait a few seconds. Also the undo can be glitchy so save before using it. To disable the tool, click somewhere in the UV editor to deselect the UVs of the proxy plane and it shall be removed. The fit UV to UDIM is going to scale the UVs of the selection to fit exactly one UDIM with a few units of gaps on the edge. This is very useful when you know specifically if one piece shall fill one UDIM and then you get the texel density from there. The get texel density and set the shell is identical to Maya's texel density, in fact it's using it, but the set to selection is new. This is basically going to apply the ratio together to your entire selection and not scale each UV shell separately. This can be useful if you are rescaling the UVs after you are already done with the layout. You can see in this example I rescaled the UVs without losing the layout of the groups then just went to the distribution and layout to lay out the scalar groups. The transfer UV is using Maya's transfer attributes, only that it can transfer for multiple geometries at once and gives you all the options you need at your fingertips without changing any settings. To start transferring UVs, first you need to select the geometry you want to transfer it from and press the set as reference. You should see the name of your geometry appear in the label above the button. With that done, to transfer the UVs, select your targets and press Transfer UV ID or Transfer UV Topo. As the name suggests, the first one is transferring based on ID and this is the faster one, but if the ID is different on source and the target, then the second option is the one you should use, which is slower, but it's going to be able to do that transfer in that case as well. Both of these scripts need the source and target geometries to be identical. However, it is okay most of the time if they are flipped along one of the axes. In case they are flipped or mirrored, there's a way too many things that can happen. Sometimes when you think the transfer is successful, it turns out the UVs are flipped or that each of the faces are separated or randomly assigned. Transferring with topo can help in this case. If that doesn't work, sometimes reversing to normals and then transferring works. Then you have to reverse the normal back again and flip the UVs. Project UV works based on the position of the source and the target in 3D space. And there is also transfer shape, which is not exactly for unwrapping. It can be used to morph the target to the source's shape based on the UVs. They can have different topology but need overlapping UVs. I mostly use this when I want to have control over a topology for a cloth from Marvelous Designer. Orient UV shell is made to achieve nice uniform orientation for all UV shells. Just select your geometry or group and press the Orient UV shells button. Multiple objects can be selected in the same time, but it will always apply to each UV shell separately. It will try to find the orientation that's gonna have the smallest bounding box. Sometimes for some shells that's not correct, in that case you can select edges of the incorrectly oriented UV shells, which will lead the script to achieve the correct orientation. Wordspace options controls where the UVs are going to point in the 3D viewport. Y is the default and that means it's going up. To inspect this we can assign the flow shader. The UV space controls the orientation in UV space of the UV shells. Horizontal makes it lie horizontally, vertical makes it stand vertically. UV space settings has priority before wall space settings. This is an especially useful tool when you plan to have, for example, a wooden tile applied and you want to make sure everything is oriented nicely. Also the function from the distribution layout many times only consider the bounding box only, so you will want to make sure those are as small as possible. No undo is there because if you run the script on very heavy geometry, it's going to fear your RAM. If you enable no undo, your RAM won't be touched, but as the name suggests, you also can't undo after that. This option only applies to this tool though. The functions in UV editing tools are more for actually creating the UVs from scratch. In this part you will also see how I'm combining these tools with the other ones from this toolkit. 
Rectangulate can rectangulate to grillify UV shells which have grid light topology. Just select the UV shells you want to run it on and press the button. After that you might have to run the legacy unfold U and legacy unfold V and rectangulate again and repeat the process until you are satisfied with the amount of distortion. For some geometries it's not that simple for the script to know what to do, so for that you can lead it by selecting one of the edges of the longer edge loop running through the shell. Anything that has any extra face or hole won't work. For that there is another solution. So the straighten edge straightens an edge as its name suggests and then pins it. The plus parallel to axis is an extended version of this where the resulting pinned edge is going to be well parallel to an axis in UV space and also gets pinned. After that you can unfold, optimize and legacy unfold to U if the pinned edge is horizontal or V if the pinned edge is vertical. You can also pin multiple edge loops for one UV shell and after you are done you can press the unpin all button. The box unfold can help you with unwrapping box like geometries. It needs the geometry to be beveled on a way that has an edge in the middle. You can run the script without leading it, it's going to be slower and for more complex geometry it's going to be unable to find the correct edge to cut first. To lead it select one of those middle edges of a bevel like this and run the script. Your selected edge is going to be cut and the faces parallel to that are all going to be welded together and the perpendiculars one to the top and the bottom are going to form the cap of the geometry. This script can run on many objects, especially hard surface models, as many times they turn out to be just boxes with small details. You can run it on geometries that are combined and grouped together as well, very useful to quickly unwrap simple planks as well. Stitch Edges is doing almost exactly the same uh, what the Stitch Edges in Maya. I just had it in there for a few years now and they didn't remove it, but what it does is that it moves and soups with scaling. Close hole is basically going to extrude your selected edge and weld to one point, but also make the UVs of the newly created faces, so you won't end up with faces as big as the entire unit. The fixed border buttons can be used when you already unwrapped a geometry and then smoothed it, and the UVs around the border are kinda distorted. The first uses unfold on border UVs, the second uses optimize. Sometimes one of them works better than the other. It can happen that you have to press it multiple times in quick succession to fix the distortion. Move UVs to same position does exactly the same as its name suggests, it moves every UV shell of your selection to same position. S loop selector is my custom loop selector, so first you have to select one edge and when you run it, first it goes only until a UV shell border, next time you run it, it goes to traditional UV loop, after that it can loop through triangulator geometries as well. Select Bevel is one of the scripts that makes box unfold possible. It's a bit difficult to explain what it's doing, it's easier to just show. But basically this is the script that selects the caps in the box unfold, so we have to select this edge, then run the script, and then you should get a result like this. This is really useful to unwrap geometries which are beveled, but they are not exactly having the right topology for the box unfold, like in this example. Delete undo is here to delete all the undo information in case your RAM gets full whilst running the scripts or anything else really. The error check scripts are made to find errors in the UVs that would make it in some cases impossible to texture them. Check if Geo has no UVs, finds any geometry which has faces with absolutely no UVs. It doesn't check for UVs with zero UV space though. Fix flipped UVs is not exactly just analyzing, because it does actually fix the flipped UVs and it flips the UVs along the axis of the UV shell, not the selection. Check for placement error, finds any UV shell that is put beyond the tent UDIM or is in negative UV space as well as crossing the UDIM border. Check for overlapping UV shells, find UV shells which are overlapping, but in case of overlap it's gonna add only one of the two UV shells to the list, as this makes the algorithm way faster and also faster to fix the issues. 
To run the scripts, first you need to select the group or geometry you want to analyze, then run the script of your choice. Once they finish analyzing, they will prompt you with a message telling how much error were there, if there were any, and they're also going to select the problematic UV shells. Feel free to select only one of the shells at a time to fix the issues, because you can reselect the last result of the script by pressing the reselect button. Ok, so that's about it mostly, hope you found this tutorial useful and informative, also hope you like this script. It has been in development over two and a half years now, well, not in active development, but when the need arose or got an idea and had free time, just worked on it. And now I thought it's ready to be released, although I have many more ideas how to improve it as well as for new functions, but nothing is ever finished I guess. I use these scripts on a daily basis, so it should work, but in case you encounter any issues, feel free to contact me. You can find me through my website as well as Facebook, YouTube or Instagram. Let me know your thoughts and thank you for watching.